right? We're going to continue yesterday, last night's topic. Um, the value of the virtuous woman. Okay, the value of the virtue of the virtuous woman. Uh, we ended up on Proverbs 31, verse 15. But before we go there, I just want to just touch on something. Give me Proverbs 31, verse 10. So I'm going to circle back a little bit. Um, okay, Proverbs 31, verse 10. Read that. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. So the question is, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Okay, read that part again, verse 10. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. We went over last night that a virtuous woman is a, is a lawful woman. A virtuous woman, uh, let's get the definition one more. So I don't, so I don't butcher it. Okay, let me just um, share my screen real quick. Okay. Okay, so read that, the definition of virtuous. The definition of virtuous, mm -hmm. having or showing high moral standards. Having or showing high moral standards. So a virtuous woman is a woman that has or shows high moral standards, meaning she applies herself according to the scriptures. She patterns herself according to what's written in this Bible to make sure that she does all things that are written therein. Read that definition again. The definition of virtuous. Mm -hmm. Having or showing high moral standards. Having or showing high moral standards. Okay, go back to Proverbs 31 verse 10. Read that again. Proverbs 31 verse 10. Come on. Who can find a virtuous woman? Mm -hmm. For her price is far above rubies. For her price is far above rubies. A virtuous woman, which is a woman that, that has a high moral standard, is that that sister right there, she's, her price is far above rubies. Meaning this woman is priceless. You understand? You cannot put a price on this sister right there. Give me the book of Sarah 26 verse 1. We went over this last night, so I just want to touch on it once again. Sarah 26 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife. Come on. For the number of his days shall be doubled. You see that thing? Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife. You understand? For the number of his days shall be doubled. Now, remember, we were dealing with the second point. We're almost done with the second point. The first point was um, a virtuous woman understands the order of God. She understands God's order. The second characteristic of a virtuous woman is that the virtuous woman understands her role. She understands it. She, she, she understands her role and she humbles down to the role that the Lord gave her. You understand? And she fully takes advantage of her role. You understand? Righteously so. All right. Sarah 26 verse 1. Read that again. Ecclesiastes 26 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife. Read. For the number of his days shall be double. Come on, verse 2. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband, mm. and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. He shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 26 verse 3. Verse 3. Isaiah. The book of Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. The book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Come on. Whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. So now you see, you see the Lord is going to keep that man in perfect peace, or that woman in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on the Lord, because he, trust, he or she trusts in the Lord. Guess what? The most like God, we, we trust in the Lord because we believe on, on his word. But the most like God compares his word, his wisdom to a woman. You understand? So now, it says when you trust in what the Lord says, guess what? You will be kept in perfect peace. So if the, the virtuous woman understands that she has to be the pillar of rest, 
You understand? Because if your mind rests, if your, your the mind of the of the husband will rest, will be at rest. Why? Because he's got a, he's got a pillar of rest. Because this sister right here, she makes sure that her husband is in perfect peace because she models herself according to what this Bible says. That was the whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Watch this. Give me, give me Isaiah chapter 28, verse 12. Isaiah 28, verse 12. The book of Isaiah chapter 28, verse 12. Mm -hmm. To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Come on. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. You see that thing is that to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the worry to rest. So the rest is what? The rest is the Bible. What's in the Bible? God's law. God's law. When you believe and trust and apply what is written in this book, the most that God will keep you in perfect peace. Guess what? The virtuous woman, she understands that she has to pattern herself according to what is written in terms of her role. Because this sister, she's not a fool. She understands her role. And the role she has to play in her husband's life. You understand? So that her husband will be able to safely trust in her. Her husband will be able to what? To have peace all the days of his life. That's what the Bible is saying. You understand? That's why the woman is, the, the virtuous woman, not just any woman, but the virtuous woman is called a pillar of rest. Okay? Now, go back to Sarah 26, verse 2. Sarah 26 and verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 2. Mm -hmm. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband, and he shall fulfill all the years of his life, or he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. He shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. Why? Because the virtuous woman understands she has to be the pillar of rest. You know what a pillar is? A pillar is something that you can lean against. You understand? When all, all the issues that are going on in the world, you know what, because you know the black man is getting it. As the man, we're getting it the, the hardest, the worst on this earth. Yes, the black woman, we're all as a people, as a nation, the Israelite man, the Israelite woman, we're in slavery. But the black man is at the bottom. The black woman is on top of the black man. You understand? So the virtuous woman understands that the black man, the fight that we have, to, the fight that we have on our hands, listen. We are fighting the fight. We, this is a spiritual fight that we're in. We're, we are fighting a spiritual fight so that we can be able to overcome our issues, our sins, our mental hang-ups. You understand? So we can rule the nations on earth. But for that to happen, the black man must put his boots on and stand up. Now, the, the virtuous woman understands the amount of work that the black man has to raise up the nation of Israel. The virtuous woman understands it. You understand? She's going to fulfill her role. She's going to do it without lip because she understands the role she has to play based on the role that her husband has to play. You understand? Or the man that the Lord has set over them has to play. You understand? Give me that in Proverbs. I mean, Wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 1. I love this chapter. This chapter right here, beautiful chapter. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8. Let's start at verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 1. Wisdom. Wisdom. Reacheth from one end to another mighty mm -hmm. and sweetly does she order all things. So wisdom sweetly or sweetly orders all things. The wisdom of the most high God sets things in order. Guess what? The, 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 the wisdom of the Lord is compared to a woman. You understand? Because what do you do with your wife? What, what do you do when, when it comes to a woman, the relationship between man and woman, they get married. You understand? They spend their life together. They grow age together. You understand? The woman becomes that pillar of rest. Wisdom is like that. Like a spouse. Okay? Because wisdom will give you rest. Will give you tranquility. Will give you peace. Perfect peace. The, the virtuous woman understands that, that, that that's the role she has to play. You understand? Read that again, verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Wisdom reacheth from one end to another, mighty, and sweetly doth she order all things. Come on, that's true. I loved her and sought her out from my youth. 
I desired to make her my spouse. Come on. And I was a lover of her beauty. You see that thing? It says, I loved her and sought her out for my youth. You know what it means to sort something out? Listen, you move heaven and earth to find it. You understand? To make sure that you get hold of the thing. Because what? This, you understand the value because it's a treasure. We went over a class like this sometime back. You understand that you must treat the laws of God like a treasure. It's treasure. You understand? So now, wisdom of the, the wisdom of the, of the most high God, because it's treasure, guess what? Sisters, you need to pattern yourself according to the characteristics of wisdom of the most high. You understand? So you can be that treasure. A treasure is an asset. It's a valuable item that everybody wants to own. When they have it, they hedge it. They protect it. They look after it. You understand? Because it's an asset. That asset brings, when you invest, if it's an investment, you're going to get returns on your investment. Guess what? Those returns is when the sister is going to deal with, the, with, with her law, with her king. When the man sets the order in the house, guess what? The woman will be able to, to, what, to make sure that those orders come to pass. That's how you build with your king. You understand? That's your role. You support him 100%. Okay? Verse 2 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 2. Come on. I loved her and sought her out from my youth. Mm -hmm. I desired to make her my spouse, and I was a lover of her beauty. You see that thing? I was a lover of her beauty. Because wisdom is beautiful, just like a virtuous woman. A virtuous woman is beautiful to look upon. You understand? Not just on the outside, but the, the, her character, her report, her reputation, the wisdom that the Lord has bestowed on her because of what? Understanding the order that the Lord has set up and understanding her role in the order that the Lord has set up. Okay, jump down to verse 9 now. Wisdom of Solomon 8 verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 9. Come on. Therefore, I purpose to take her to me to live with me. Knowing that she would be a counselor of good things. You see that thing? And a comfort. Hold on. Wisdom is a wisdom is a counselor of good things. Do you understand? Wisdom will counsel you of good things. Guess what? When you know that your Lord is stressed out, guess what your job is to? Your job is to comfort him. Your job is to make sure that because you understand that this man goes through a lot, so on and so forth. Your job is to comfort this man. You become that pillar of rest. That's why it says. Counselor of good things. You understand? Read it again, verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I purposed to take her to me to live with me, knowing that she would be a counselor of good things. Come on. And a comfort in cares and grief. You see that thing? Wisdom will comfort you in times of cares and grief. When things go wrong, guess what? Wisdom, the wisdom of the most high God is a pillar to protect you, to comfort you. Guess what? The virtuous woman understand this is what, this is her role. You understand? This is part of her role to make sure that she fulfills that role to the utmost best of her ability. You understand? Read on. Jump down to the, read verse 16. Jump down to verse 16. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 16. Mm -hmm. After I am come into mine house, I will repose myself with her. Stop right there. I For her what? conversation, I will repose myself with her. He says, I will repose myself with her. Let's get the definition of the word repose. Okay? Repose. Yes. Okay. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay. Read that. The definition of repose. Noun. A state of rest, sleep, or tranquility. Okay, read that again, I'm sorry. The definition of repose. Now, a state of rest, sleep, or tranquility. You see that thing, repose is a state of rest. Sleep or tranquility. Okay, so now watch this. Um, read that. Verb, lie down to rest. Lie down, lie down in rest. rest. Lie down in rest. Lie down in rest. Meaning what? Read that part again in Wisdom of Solomon 8. 
Wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 16. Read that paragraph when it starts with Paul. Wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 16. Mm -hmm. After I am coming to my house, I will repose myself with her. You see that thing? I will lie down in rest with her. You see that thing? Now he's making reference to wisdom. Guess what? That is the, that is the same mindset that the virtuous woman must have. Knowing that she got, she, she, she got it going on when it comes to her love. Her king. She knows how to cater for her love. You understand? With all his needs. She knows how to do that. You understand? That's why it says, after I'm coming to my house, I will repose myself with her. Meaning what? Your Lord is actually looking forward to leave the plantation. Because we're talking about when we are in the plantation, while we're still in the plantation, in the lands of our captivity, in the kingdom also. The same type of thing. The same thing. But the key is, when your husband, when your Lord comes home, your Lord must be looking forward to come home. Because he knows that when I get home, listen, I can have the worst day on earth, but I know when I get home, I will repose myself with my wife. Why? Because I know that when I arrive, I'm not going to hear, no, this thing is not, we, we don't have, we, we, we don't have, we don't have potato, we don't have this, uh, we, 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 the, 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 the light bill is, 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 is off, you understand? All of, you're not going to meet your husband at the door with bill. So nobody wants that, okay? Sister must learn timing. You must learn timing. Don't do it. Don't do it when your when your Lord comes home. Don't do that. Okay? Do it when he leaves the house in the morning. You know why you must do it when he leaves the house in the morning? Because in the morning, that's when he's getting ready to do what? To kick some to kick some butt out there. To be going to war. So when he goes to war, that's when you actually you talk to him. Okay? Listen, um, we need this and this and this and that. Okay. And then he, okay, you write them down, make sure you make a nice list so he knows, okay, these are things that I must deal with on my way to where I'm going, when I'm going out there to fight the war. Don't do it when he comes home. That's very, very bad timing. Guess what? Why would, how can your Lord repose himself with you when he comes home from a hard day's work, you're already talking about bail. You're talking about, no. We don't operate like that. When he gets home, you must be dressed nice, okay? all oiled up, looking beautiful as ever. Meet him at the door. You understand? Make him seem like a king that he is. That's how you must do it. You understand? You practice that thing. I know some for the sisters, it doesn't come naturally because we've been so destroyed. But it's time to learn this day. You understand? That's your role. So that your husband can be, your lord, your king, your master, can be able to repose himself with you. Read that definition again. Lie down what? The definition of repose. Lie down in rest. You see that thing? Lie down in rest. You understand? Lie down in rest. So that's your job. The virtuous woman, she'll understand that thing. The virtuous woman, she's not going to have letter. Okay? The virtuous woman will make sure that she knows, okay, the Lord is coming home at this point. Or you can make sure that you understand, okay, when you, when you come in, you can communicate with him. Okay, when you're about to leave the place and all of that, when you are when you are 15 minutes or 20 minutes, 15 minutes from being at the house and all of that, let me know. Why? Because you want to make sure that you run a nice bath for him. You put some stuff in there so he can relax himself. Okay, watch this. Give me, give me the book of Judges. I want to show you something. Okay, you can read between the lines on this screen right here. Give me the book of Judges, chapter 16, and verse. Give me Judges 16 and verse. This is Delilah and Samson. Okay, read, um, read Judges 16, verse 18. We're gonna start there, we're gonna read down. Okay, the book of Judges, chapter 16, verse 18. Come on, and when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart. Come on. She sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath showed me all his heart. Come on. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. So now, remember, um, Delilah was the devil, but here's what Delilah knew how to do. Watch the next verse. Okay, watch this. And she made him sleep upon her knees. She did what? And she made him sleep upon her knees. 
he, she, Delilah, made Samson sleep upon her knees. What that means? Okay? Meaning Delilah knew how to work her stuff. Okay? Delilah, she knew how to work her good. She knew how to work that thing. Okay? So much so that Samson was put to sleep. You understand that? Sisters, you just read between the lines on that one. Read that again. Judges chapter 8, chapter 16, verse 19. And she made him sleep upon her knees. She made him, she made Samson to sleep upon her knees. So Delilah knew how to work her stuff. You understand? She knew how to work her feminine while, if that's what, that's how they, that's what they call it. You understand? So sisters, for your, for your Lord, your King to come home, you need to know how to work your stuff. To make sure that you distress your Lord. Make sure that he's distressed and relaxed. You understand that thing? Okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be too graphic. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it right there. Go back to where he was at. Um Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8, verse 16. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8, verse 16. Read. After I am come into mine house, mm -hmm. I will repose myself with her. He will repose himself with with, with this woman because this woman understands her role. You understand? Read on. For her conversation hath no bitterness. Stop right there. For her what? For her conversation hath no bitterness. For her conversation hath no bitterness. Because imagine you come you come home, you are exhausted and all of that, you are finished. Okay. When you get home, guess what? They already take it to you giving you a list of bills that you got to deal with. Listen, that's the, the conversation of bitterness. You understand? That means you're not using wisdom. You don't know how to be able to be that pillar of rest. Timing is important, sisters. You need to have timing. You need to do it in the morning when he's ready to go out there to, to you know, to, be, to conquer, to go out there to, to, to put up a fight. That's when you give him the, the, the thing that you need to deal with. Okay, these are things, they, 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 they. these are things I need to deal with. Okay, when he leaves, you already, his sword is already sharpened. Okay, when he leaves the house, everything is all good. I'll, pay, I'll, plan, I'll, I'll, I'll put it like this. When, okay, when he comes home, make sure that his stomach is full. Okay, that means you prepare the food. You know how to cook him the food that he wants, the food that he loves to eat. The food that you know makes him makes him you know love you even more. Okay, fill his stomach when he when he gets home. Make him relax. Do all those glorious things that you do. Then when he, before he leaves, make sure that you empty his tank. Sisters, can you read between the lines? If you can read between the lines, say I. Okay. Hello, sisters. Hi. Do you do you you, you understand what what we are bringing up? Yes, sir. Oh, please. Okay, read that part again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 16. Come on. After I am come into mine house, I will repose myself with her. Uh -huh. for, her for her conversation hath no bitterness. For her conversation hath no bitterness. Read on. And to live with her hath no sorrow. To live with her hath no sorrow because this woman is not a fool. She understands the order that the Lord has set up and she understands her role in the order that the Lord has set up. She knows how to be the pillar of rest. She knows when, 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 when her Lord or her King, when her King is ready to receive it, to receive the things that she he needs to deal with. You understand for her and so forth. She knows when to be able to talk to him about important matters. She understands all of that. You understand? We really? and to live with her has no sorrow. Mm -hmm. But mirth and joy. But mirth and joy. Come on, verse 17. Now, when I considered these things in myself and pondered them in my heart, mm -hmm. how that to be allied unto wisdom is immortality. You see that thing? Read that for read that last precept again. It says, How to be what? How that to be allied unto wisdom is immortality. How to be allied unto wisdom is immortality. Guess what? We just read this thing in Sirach. Go back to Sirach 26. Sirach 26 verse 2. We read it in Sirach. Sirach 26 and verse 2. Ecclesiasticus chapter 26 verse 2. Actually, you know what? Read, read this one also. Read this one. Start of verse 1. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife, for the number of his days shall be double. You see that, that you see that part right there? For the number of his days shall be double. That goes into what? That goes into um that goes into that part when it says how to how that to be allied unto wisdom is immortality. You understand? Read on verse two. Verse two. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband, mm -hmm. and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. You see that thing? He shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. Because when you are allied unto wisdom, you're gonna get those you're gonna get those benefits. The virtuous woman understands that. She understands her value. She understands her role. She understands the, the value she's bringing to her king. She understands that. And she what? She loves it. So, you understand? Go back to, um, go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 and verse 18. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 18. Mm -hmm. And great pleasure it is to have her friendship. Read. And in the works of her hands are infinite riches. Read that again. In the what? And in the works of her hands are infinite riches. You see that thing? That's a, that's a true pillar of rest right there. It says in the works of her hands are infinite riches. Because guess what? You're going to have what? The fruit of the spirit. Watch this. Give me the book of Romans 11, verse 33, real quick. Romans chapter 11, verse 33. Watch this. Romans chapter 11, verse 33. Mm -hmm. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. You see that thing? The depth and riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. So this riches is making reference to the wisdom and knowledge of the most High God. Okay. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 18. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And great pleasure it is to have her friendship. Read. And in the works of her hands are infinite riches. In the works of her hands are infinite riches. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. This virtuous woman, she has that. The virtuous woman has wisdom. She has knowledge and understanding of how to what? How to be an asset to her king. She understands all of that. You understand? She's not confused about that thing. When the scripture comes out, she humbles down. She patterns herself according to what that says the law. Because the Lord will see that this woman right here, she's submissive. In with all subjection, no lip, no nothing. Guess what? The most High God will make sure that he imparts wisdom, knowledge, and understanding unto you through your law. Because you are a mind that is what? The mind that is well instructed. Instructed of what? The wisdom and knowledge of the most high God. That's where the infinite the infinite riches are going to be found. In your mind. Because you have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in your spirit. You understand? That's why you'll always be able to know how to come forth. It doesn't mean you're not going to have trouble in the flesh. It doesn't mean you're not going to have arguments. But the way you handle those arguments, it will show whether you have those infinite riches or not. Which is what God's law. How you handle it, that's how it's going to determine whether you are of the gift of Satan or the gift of the Most High. The choice is yours. You understand? Um, read on. And in the works of her hands are infinite riches. Mm -hmm. And in the exercise of and in the exercise of conference with her, prudence. Stop right there. Let's get the definition of prudence. Okay? That's not a regular Negro word. So let's get let's get the definition of it. Prudence. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Heavy stuff. It's funny how when you when you when you get the definition of the word yes or yes, you see my uh, read that the definition of prudence. The definition of prudence. Mm -hmm. Now, the quality of being prudent, cautiousness. Now, because they said the quality of being prudent. Okay. That doesn't really say nothing. Watch this. Let's get the synonyms of prudence. Synonyms of prudence. Uh -huh. Wisdom. You see that thing? Prudence is wisdom. Prudence is wisdom. Read that part again in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 18. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 18. 
and great pleasure it is to have her friendship. And in the works of her hands are infinite riches. And in the exercise of conference with her, prudence. You see that thing? In the exercise of conference, what is that? Conversation with her. Conferencing with this, with, with this woman. Conferencing with wisdom is that you're going to get what? Prudence. You're going to get wisdom. Because she's going to she what? She's going to be a comfort in cares and grief. When there's problems in the marriage, guess what? She's not going to be frightened. She's going to realize, you know what? Let me, let me actually help my Lord to solve the problem. Let not, am I being part of the problem or am I being part of the solution? A virtuous woman is conscious of that. Am, my behavior, this behavior of mine, am I being part of the problem or part of the solution? Once she understands, guess what she's doing? She's examining herself because why? She's got wisdom. She's got common sense. She's got prudence. You understand? Next verse. Okay. Um, read that. Good judgment. Good judgment. Okay. Read that. Sagacity. 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 Oh, sagacity. Come on. Come sagacity. On. Let's get the definition of sagacity. Okay. The definition of sagacity. Now, the quality of being sagacious. Sagacious. Okay. Read that. Wisdom. Wisdom. Watch this. Deep insight. insight. Deep insight. Deep insight. Okay. Read that. Depth. Depth. Watch this. Read that thing. Learning. You see that thing? The opposite of that. Read that. Stupidity. Stupidity. So a virtuous woman, she's not a simple woman. She's not a simple sister. This sister is what? She's got common sense. Let's go back to the definition of prudence now. Okay? Because there's a word I saw in there. All right? Okay. Let's go back. Read that. Mm, I like that one. Read that one. Synonyms of prudence. Uh -huh. Advisability. What did it say? Advisability. You see that thing? Advisability. What what future can we go for that? Give me that in um, second Ezra fourteen thirty four. This is the scripture you can use. John three verse three is another one. Matthew eighteen verse three. Okay, so Isaiah fifty five verse eight. You can there's a couple of precepts you can go to. Second Ezra fourteen verse thirty four. Read that thing. Okay. Second Ezra chapter fourteen verse thirty four. Come on. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding. Stop right there. And that reform you, your says, hearts. Hold on. He says you must do what? Therefore, if so be, that you will subdue your own understanding. He says subdue. Let go of your own understanding. Because why? If you don't let go of your own understanding, are you going to be advisable? No. Are you going to receive counsel? No. Hell no. You're not going to receive counsel. Because you are not advisable. Why? Because you did not subdue your own understanding. You've got all the wine in your, you've got all old wine in running through your veins. You don't want to get rid of that old wine so new wine can be poured into your veins. You still want to run with the old wine mixed with the new. That's not going to work. That's not going to happen. So run. Read that again with 34. Read that. Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 34. Come on. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding. Subdue. And reform subdue, your heart. Subdue. Hold on. Subdue your own understanding. You notice that part when it says your own. Your own understanding. You, yes, yeah, subdue. Let go. Let go of what? Your own understanding. Your own understanding and take on the Lord's understanding. You understand? That's how you, you that, that's why you're gonna have the characteristics of being advisable. Okay, advisability. You have gonna have that quality. A virtuous woman will have that. She'll have prudence because when you conversate with a virtuous woman, guess what? She doesn't back up, she doesn't have a back, 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 back. Where the booty, what what does the booty have to do with it? Leave the booty out of it. Okay, there's always this back, back, back. Mm -mm. Just pay attention, listen and learn, receive instruction, learn something. You understand? Read that again and finish that verse. Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 34. Come on. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding. 
Come on. And reform your hearts. Mm -hmm. Ye shall be kept alive. Come on. And after death, ye shall obtain mercy. Because the most high God will have mercy on you. You understand? When you have prudence, advisability. Okay? You're going to be able, the Lord will have mercy on you to do what? To bestow his wisdom upon you. But if you don't have that quality, the Lord not going to do that thing. The Lord will let you be and drop dead. Okay? We're going to walk all over. Watch this. Next characteristic. Definition. Read that. Common sense. What did you say? Common sense. Common sense. Common sense. Okay. Now. Watch this. Give me the book of Nehemiah 8 verse 8. 8 verse 8. I love this picture right here. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 8. Okay. Nehemiah 8 verse 8. Read that. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 8. Mm -hmm. So they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly, and gave the sense, and caused them to understand the reading. And caused them to understand the reading. So you see, you see what they say? It says, and they gave the sense. Where did they get the sense from? The laws of God. The laws of God gives you common sense. It gives you prudence. You understand? God's commandments, they give you prudence common sense. Because some of us, we don't have that thing. We need to learn it. But we need to what? We need to have that, that character of what? Advisability. Common sense. You understand? We need to be able to know how to be quiet, listen, and learn. Because a lot of us, we've got a lot of demons in us. Okay? So we need to be able to allow the most High God to cleanse us from our filthiness. Okay? Go back to where he was at now. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8, verse 18. Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And great pleasure it is to have her friendship. And in the works of her hands are infinite riches. Read. And in the exercise of conference with her, prudence. Read on. And in talking with her, and in talking with her, a good report. You see that thing? Okay, read that part again. It says, and in talking with her, pick it up from there. And in talking with her, mm -hmm. a good report. And in talking with her, a good report. Guess what? What is that talk? What is that talking about? Give me the book of Judith, chapter 8. Judith chapter 8 and verse 28. We're gonna start from there. Judith chapter 8, verse 28. The book of Judith, chapter 8, verse 28. Then said Ozias to her, All that thou hast spoken, hast thou spoken with a good heart. Read. And there is none that may gainsay thy words. He says, There's no one that is going to gainsay your words. You understand? Because he says, She has spoken with a good heart. Well, how do you have a good heart? Give me that in um, Luke chapter 8, verse 15. Luke 8, 15. Luke 8, verse 15. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 15. But that on good ground are they, which, which in an honest and good heart. In a what? In an honest and good heart. In an honest and good heart, come on. Having heard the word, keep it and no, no. bring forth fruit with patience. Read the verse again from the top, from the top, verse 15, come on. The book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 15. Come on. But that on the good ground are they, uh -huh. which in an honest and good heart. In an honest, in an honest and good heart. The subject matter here is what? Having an honest and good heart. Good report. Read. Which in having an honest and good heart, having heard the word, mm -hmm. keep it. And bring forth fruit with patience. You see that thing? If you have an, if you say you have a good heart, you must hear the word and keep it. If you say you have a good heart, you must hear the word of God and keep it. You understand? That's what it means to have an honest and a good heart. A good heart. You must hear the word of God, receive it, believe it, apply it. That's what it means. Go back to where was that? Judith chapter 8 verse 28. Read that. The book of Judith, chapter 8, verse 28. Uh -huh. Then said Ozias to her, All that thou hast spoken, 
thou spoken with a good heart. Because, because Judith was known to do what? She had a reputation of applying and keeping the laws of God. She had a good report among the men of Israel. See? And there is none that may gainsay thy words. See? For this is not the first day wherein thy wisdom is manifested. You see that thing? That, what is that talking about? She had a reputation. She had a good report. That's why in Wisdom of Solomon, so we don't lose the thought. Remember, this is now the role of the virtuous woman. She understands her role and she plays it very well. And when she plays it well, guess what she, she has? She develops a reputation among all those that know her in Israel. She, she develops a reputation among the leaders of Israel. You understand? That's why in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8, is, is 8 verse 18 says, and in talking with her, a good report. That is the example we're reading in the book of Judith. You understand? Verse 29 again. Judith chapter 8 verse 29. For this is not the first day wherein thy wisdom is manifested. Because what? She was, she was known that when she spoke, the things that she spoke about, those are the things that were based on what is written in the Bible and they came to pass. You understand? And her wisdom was manifested among all Israel. Read. Really. But from the beginning of thy days, all the people have known thy understanding. Mm. Because, the, because the disposition of thine heart is good. You see that thing? Because the disposition of thine heart is good. Read on. Watch this. Now, actually, you know what? Jump down to verse 31. Jump down to verse 31. Judith, chapter 8, verse 31. Therefore now, pray thou for us, because thou art a godly woman. Now you see that thing? <laughs> thou art a godly woman. This is a virtuous woman right here. She developed such, she had a good reputation. She had a good report. When the men of Israel spoke with her, the leaders of Israel spoke with her, guess what? They could listen to the sister. The sister would be able to say, I have an idea, I see something. The, the man will actually what, give time to listen to what the sister has to say. You understand? But if you're always involved in gossip, you don't sub subject yourself to your Lord, you don't understand God's order, you don't know your role, guess what? Don't know men in Israel, the leader is going to listen to nothing you say. You understand? Read. Therefore, thou, therefore now pray thou for us, mm -hmm. because thou art a godly woman. Come on. And the Lord will send us rain to fill our cisterns and we shall faint no more. You see that thing right there? So that's a heavy thing right there that's, that's going to went down. Okay? That's a heavy thing. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 33. Watch, watch this. Judith chapter 8 verse 33. Ye shall stand this night in the gate and I will go forth with my, with my waiting woman. With my what? And within the with my waiting woman. With my waiting woman. So Judith had women that she was looking after. Women that served her. You understand? Because Judith, she was filled with wisdom. She was a Title II woman. She was a Proverbs 31 woman. She was a virtuous woman. Read. And within the days that ye have promised to deliver the city to our enemies, the Lord will visit Israel by my hand. You see that thing? Because they asked her to pray. They asked Judith to pray for them. They said, pray. Sister, pray. You understand? Why? Because she had developed a good reputation in Israel. That's what that's going into. He's not talking about the sister of, 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 of uh, usurping authority over the man. No. She did it in according to the order. According to the order, she understands point one. She understands the order of God. She knows where the power comes from. She understands her role in this man, in, in, this, in this business of the Lord. She understands that. So she did it orderly. She cannot do the second, she cannot fulfill the second characteristic if she does not understand the first. You first need to understand the order that the Lord has set up. Then you're going to be able to understand your role in that order that has been set up by the majesty on high. You understand? Okay. So go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 18. Let's finish that verse. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 18. And great pleasure it is to have her friendship 
and in the works of her hands are infinite riches. Mm -hmm. And in the exercise of conference with her, prudent, no. and in talking with her, a good okay. report. In talking with her, a what? And in talking with her, a good report. A good report. She had a good reputation. Read on. I went about seeking how to take her to me. You see that thing right there? So a, 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 an, a, a, an honorable man that keeps God's commandments, the man of the most high God that keeps God's law, the most high God will bless that man with a special woman. Understand that. Okay, jump down to verse 21. Read verse 21 now. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 21. Come on. Nevertheless, when I perceived that I could not otherwise obtain her, except God gave her me, and was a point of wisdom also to know whose gift she was. Read that part again, verse 21. I'm sorry. Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 21. Nevertheless, when I perceived that I could not otherwise obtain her, except God gave her me. Uh -huh. And that was a point of wisdom also to know whose gift she was. Because wisdom is a gift of the most high God. Understand that. Wisdom is the gift of the Lord. Watch this. Give me that in uh, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 26. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 26. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments. You yes, desire what? And the Lord, if thou desire wisdom. If thou desire, if thou desire wisdom, you must what? Keep the commandments. If you desire the wisdom of the Most High God, you better humble down to what this Bible says. That's what he means. Humble down. You understand? Have prudence. Develop some common sense, which is God's law. Okay, uh, finish that verse. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 26. Mm -hmm. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. The Lord shall what? And the Lord shall give her unto thee. And the Lord shall give, shall give. You are given because it's a what? It's a gift of the Lord. Go back to wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 21. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, when I perceived that I could not otherwise obtain her, except God gave her me. You see that thing? Come on. And that was a point of wisdom also to know whose gift she was. You see that thing? So wisdom is a gift of the Lord. He says, if you desire wisdom, you must keep the commandments and the Lord will give her unto thee. As a what? As a gift. Read. I prayed unto the Lord and besought him, and with my whole heart I said. Okay, now that's it on there. Now let's go back. Go back to Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26 and verse 2. Sirach 26, verse 2. Read that. Ecclesiasticus 26, verse 2. Mm -hmm. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. Read on, verse 3. A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. A good wife will only be given to a good man, a God-fearing man, the one that keeps the commandment. You understand? Like I, I mentioned last night, if you are an Abraham, guess what? You will receive Sarah. But if you are Ahab, you're going to receive a Jezebel. You understand? That's how it goes. If you are an Ahab, you're going to receive Jezebel. If you're Abraham, you'll receive Sarah. That's how the equation, the equation has to balance. Okay? Watch this. Go back to Proverbs now, chapter 31. We're still dealing with the second characteristic that she understands her role. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 31. I have to dedicate a class to this thing. Proverbs 31. Let me see if I want to go into it. Okay. Hmm. We're just going to read through it. I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a dedicated class to this thing. Okay. Um, give me Proverbs 31 now. Proverbs 31 and verse, start at verse 13. Start at verse 10. Proverbs 31 verse 10. 
Proverbs 31 verse 10. Come on. Who can find a virtuous woman? Mm -hmm. For her price is far above rubies. She is priceless. Read on. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. Mm -hmm. So that he shall have no shall have no need of spoil. This virtuous woman understands this thing. She understands this very, she understands it deeply, you know why? Because she understands the role that she has to play. Okay, read on. Because guess what? If you don't play your role in the house as a virtuous woman, guess what? You're going to have a very poor reputation outside. You understand? Because guess what's going to happen? Let me give an example of what will happen if you're not a virtuous woman. Give me Sirach. Let me see. Mm. Give me Sirach chapter 25. You can just look at 25 and the start of the 16. If you are this type of, if you are this type of Jezebel woman right here, guess what? Here's what your husband will feel like when your name comes up. Okay? Sirach 25 verse 16. Ecclesiastic is 25 verse 16. I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon. Mm. Than to keep house with a wicked woman. Because this type of woman, she gives her husband hell. She's hell on earth. Do you understand? So this man right here says, I would rather dwell with a lion and a dragon. You see that thing? A lion is a, is a predator. Just look at lions. What they, what they just want to devour. When they get you, you're going to be teared up. He says, I would rather dwell with that type of creature than to deal with this demon woman, okay? It says, and a dragon. Because you have to imagine, a dragon is a creature that, that pushes fire out of his mouth. So imagine a dragon on one hand, pushing fire out to your, your way, and here's a lion wants to devour you. He says, I would rather dwell with these two animals than to dwell with you. Can you imagine the contempt? So that means you're doing something, something you're doing, okay? Or something you're not doing. Read on. The wickedness of a woman changes her face. You see that thing? The wickedness of a woman changes her face. You see her face is all screwed up. You understand? When you give her instruction, when you give the sister instruction, all of a sudden she's got a white part on her, on her forehead. You give the sister a simple instruction, I need you to do this and that. All of a sudden, there's Wi-Fi signal. All of a, there's all these Wi-Fi signals all over the place. Okay, she's broadcasting because now she's changing her face. She's mad. Why? Because she's not about. She, you cannot. You cannot advise the sister. That is not a mind that is well instructed. Therefore, this wisdom of the Lord will not be bestowed upon her. She's a simple woman. You understand? Read. The wickedness of a woman changeth her face mm -hmm. and darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. You see that thing? She darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. Literally, you see sisters, you can see the sister, the demon, the demon just jumps on the sister. You can literally see her, see her when just by looking at it. We see, I see a lot of them when we're at camp. You understand? There's been sisters that I've spoken to, you understand, that work in these retail shops. They say, no, they want to join us, blah, 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 but they don't join. But what I do, what I started to notice is they started to change their dress code. Because whenever we'd be on the seat teaching, I would notice that. I see, oh, the sister now, she's wearing dresses now. She's no longer wearing pants. But over time, you know what happens? Because she's not among the congregation. She's outside like a sheep, you understand? In the, in the, in the midst of cruel wolves, she gets devoured. She goes back into her sin. Guess what happens when she does that? That demon jumps on her. Her face, it looks dark. You can see that the demon now has jumped on the sister. They look sick. They look withered. You can see something wrong, but nobody else sees it. But the spiritual man sees that thing. Okay, read on. Verse 18. Verse 18. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors. This is the part I wanted to get to. He says, her husband shall sit among his neighbors. Watch this. And when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. You don't want that, sister. You don't want your Lord, your King, your Master. To be feeling like this. He can be sitting, he can be sitting with the brothers, you understand, going over scriptures, talking about how to build the nation and all of that. And when your name comes up, guess what? He just wishes that the earth could open up 
and it could just be it could just disappear. You don't want your law to feel like that or to think like that when you think about you or when your name comes up. Because when your name comes up, everybody's just silent. You understand? You don't want that type. You don't want that type of reputation in it. Okay? So this is why I wanted to actually explain that. You understand? Um, go back to Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31 and verse, read verse 12 now. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 12. Come on. She will do him good and not evil all the days of the, all the days of her life. Okay, now watch this. You know what? Hmm. I'm not gonna touch this today, okay? Just put in just put a star on that thing. Proverbs 31, write it in your Bible in your notes. Proverbs 31, we're gonna deal. I'm gonna I'll have a special class on that thing. Okay, Proverbs 31. Soon, it's coming soon. Okay. Now, watch this. I wanna deal with the next characteristic, okay? The next characteristic of the virtuous woman. The next characteristic of the virtuous woman, the virtuous woman honors her husband. That is the third characteristic of a virtuous woman. She honors her husband. Okay? The virtuous woman honors her husband. Watch this thing. Give me the book of Sirach. Hmm. You know what? Give me Hebrews 13 verse 4 real quick. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Come on. Marriage is honorable in all. What did it say? Marriage is honorable in all. It says marriage is honorable. A virtuous woman honors her husband. Notice what I said. I didn't say honors her man. No, no. Mm -mm. I said a virtuous woman honors her husband. Not her boyfriend. Not her baby father. Not her side piece. No. Mm -mm. Read that part again. It says what? Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Come on. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable because a virtuous woman understands that I have to submit myself to a husband. I cannot submit myself to a boy. You understand? I cannot submit myself to a, to a mama's baby. That's another thing. We went over that topic. The 32 is coming. Episode 2. Okay? A virtuous woman understands she will not submit herself to a boy. Oh, no. She will not submit herself to a nigger. That's not going to happen. She will submit herself to the man of the most High God. She'll do that thing. Because in the world, our sisters have been taught that if you sleep with multiple men, you understand, you are a bad bee. That's how they say. You understand, you know how to work your stuff. You understand? So, but that's not honor. That's not honorable. A virtuous woman she will what she will honor her husband because she understands that my honor comes from what me having a hedge over me my honor comes from me comes from me having a husband not me having a boyfriend you understand that's where my honor comes from when i have a, a my, when when i get married that's when my honor my honor is going to come from the fact that i'm i'm married i'm not single you understand before you get married, your honor comes from where? Your honor comes from you taking counsel, taking following instruction, being given counsel and following the counsel. You understand? Being given counsel day in and day out. Why? Because we're preparing you for what? We're preparing you for your Lord. We're preparing you for your king. So you can be an asset to him. You're going to honor him. You understand? And that honor is going to come from you being married to that man. Right now, your honor comes from where? Your honor comes from being under the leadership that the Lord has set over. Understand that. Read that again. Verse 4. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Read. Marriage is honorable in all. Come on. And the bed undefiled. Read. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. You see that thing right there? Marriage is honorable in all. In everything, everything, whatever you, can, you think about marriage, Everything and anything about it is honorable. It says, and the bed undefiled. Because when you are married, your bed is undefiled. Your bed is not defiled no more. But when you deal with a man and you are not married, you understand? Your bed is undefiled. And guess what? You are not honorable. There's nothing that you are doing that is honorable. Because you are not under the covenant of marriage, which God honors. When you open your legs and you are not married, 
guess what? That's not honor. That's dishonor to your father, to your mother, to the most High God, so on and so forth, and to yourself. Now, we are here to do what? To make sure that your honor is brought back. We are here to cleanse the filth that is, that is covering the daughter of Zion. You understand? Give me the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 31. Ephesians. I know the Christian women, they hate the book of Ephesians. They hate the letter of Paul, period. Okay? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31. Watch this. Actually, you know what? Start at verse... Hmm, no, I'm coming to that. Ephesians 5, 31. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31. Read. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother, mm -hmm. and, his, and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, Come on. And they too shall be one flesh. You see that thing right there? A man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined unto his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. Why? Because marriage is honorable in all. And the bed is undefiled. Whatever you do with your husband, them sexual things, that's honorable in the sight of God. You understand? Watch this. Next verse. Verse 32. Verse 32. Uh -huh. This is is a great mystery. Come on. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. So the Apostle Paul is going to give you the mystery of marriage. He says marriage is a great mystery. What is that mystery? Read the 32 again. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 32. Mm -hmm. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Why? Marriage is a mystery between Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel. Because Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel cannot be separated. You understand? Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel cannot be separated because the two is one. We are one with the Lord. You understand? If you read John chapter 17, when we're going over the unholy trinity and all of that, yes. Okay, verse 33 now, come on. Verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. Yes, sir. Come on. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Okay, I need you to read loud. I need some power in this thing. Verse 33 again. Ephesians 5, verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. Read. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. It says the, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Now that's the part I wanted to get to. Remember, the third characteristic of a virtuous woman, she honors her husband. You understand? Watch this. Let's get the definition of reverence. Reverence. Okay? That's not the regular Negro way. Okay? Watch this one. Okay, read the definition right there. Reverence. Read that thing. The definition of reverence. Mm -hmm. Noun. Deep respect for someone or something. Read that again. Read it again. Definition of reverence. Deep respect mm. for someone or something. You see that thing? Deep respect. Not any type of respect. Deep respect for someone or something. That's some heavy stuff right there. Is that happening today? Oh no. Mm -mm. Not the big, not the big, not the big black, not the big black mouth women. Oh no. Not the black woman. She's got a big mouth with a black gown. Okay? Read that again. She cannot keep that mouth shut. Okay? Read that again. The definition of reverence. Now, deep respect for someone or something. Deep respect for someone or something. Now, read the definition. Read that. Read the synonyms. Synonyms of reverence. High esteem. High esteem. High esteem. Because this woman, she honors her husband. She, she, she holds her husband, her lord, in high esteem. Deep respect for this man. You understand? Because she understands the, the, the level of status that, that may, this man has. What is, what, is, what is the man status? He's a God on this earth. He's a God. You understand? Read the next one. High regard. 
high regard. She holds him in high regard. Because, because when you hear today, you need to catch the taxi. Go to, go to places. Just listen to the conversations that our sisters are having when it comes to men. They speak about the black man with such contempt. Okay? Deep hatred for the black man. But we're getting our flavor back. So sisters, you need to also, as the black man has been raised up, you need to make sure that you don't get left behind. Okay? Next one. Great respect. Great respect. Great respect. Hmm. Read that thing. Worship. You see that thing? Remember, it says, the man was created in the image and the glory of the man. The woman is the glory of the man. She was made out of the man. You understand? Okay? Watch this. Hmm. Let's get the next one. Archaic definition. Read that. Archaic definition. A gesture of indicative, indicative of deep respect. Mm -hmm. A bow or curtsy. You see that thing? A bow or curtsy. So now, it says, a, a, a deep respect means reverence. You show deep respect to your husband. Guess what? You, know, you ever notice? I'm talking about today's, today's black woman now. When, whenever they, 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 they're not happy about being told what to do because the black woman has been taught, they has been taught to hate instruction. Meaning what? Is her way or the highway? That's how she's been taught. That's why the black woman is single. That's why nobody wants to marry the black woman. Okay? Why? Because she's got a big lip. Okay? She cannot keep that mouth shut. Now, you see that part where whenever there's arguments when a black woman does not want to acknowledge the wrong that she's doing, because that's another characteristic of the Jezebel woman. She doesn't see the wrong she does. She does. You understand? Guess what? When you check the Jezebel woman, she's going to be all up in your face. She's going to be pointing fingers in your face. You understand? Chest bumping you with her breath. We, we've seen, we've had the story. <laughs> okay? Brother being chest bumped by, 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 by the way. Chest bumping. What is that called? Contempt. If there's, there's no reverence in that. Okay? Read that. The definition of verb. Mm -hmm. The definition of reverence. Verb. Regard or treat with deep respect. Notice, like, it just keeps going back to deep respect. Deep respect. Deep respect. Okay? Watch this. Um, I remember the beginning when Movango Mo Mo started to play on TV. You saw that. Okay? You, what we're reading in the scriptures, that's exactly what they were showing. But they started to say, mm, no, 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 no. You need to stop that. Because now you are teaching the black woman to start to change her behavior when it comes to the black man. We need to add some Jezebels in the mix. That's why now when you look at Mubango, uh, I don't know, not about, not now. Maybe, let me see. Hmm, when was the last time I watched that show? I'd say five years ago. Yes, yeah. Okay. But the point is, they, uh, they don't show that. Now, I'm sure now they don't even show that at all. If, 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 if maybe they're just a small clip or scene. But they don't do it the way they did it in the beginning. Because in the beginning, the, 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 the media started to realize, oh, no, 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 no. Now you are teaching these black women to start to reverence their husband. We're not going to do that. That needs to change. Okay? That deep level of deep respect, gone. Okay? Now, watch this. Read that. Synonyms. Treasure. 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 Hmm. Read that. Think highly of. Think highly of. Think highly of. Okay? Read that one. Hold in high regard. You see that thing? Hold in high regard. Watch this. Put on a pedestal. Put on a pedestal because today the black woman has been put on a pedestal. You cannot correct the black woman because when you correct the black woman, you know what the black woman says? She's been given responses, automatic responses, default responses. Oh no, you can't judge me. Oh no, um, you are you you're abusive. No, he's abusing me. When you are being checked, no, he's abusing me. Oh, listen, you are being corrected and say no, you are abusing me. You know what? Those are default responses that has been put in you 
by society. What job is to put that thing out? Is to is to pull it out. You understand and set it on fire, so it can be reset. That's what we're doing this day. Okay. Um, go back to Ephesians five verse thirty three again. Ephesians chapter five verse thirty three. Come on. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife as even as himself. Really. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. He says the wife must have deep respect for her husband. The Proverbs 31, no, no, the virtuous woman understands that. Thing. A virtuous sister understands that, listen, I need to honor this man. I need to reverence this man. Why? Because I know during the time of creation, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this man. That's how you need to look at it. Because that's how it is. The facts. Watch this. Give me Sarah 26, 26. Ecclesiastical. Chapter 26 and verse 26. Ecclesiasticus chapter 26, verse 26. Mm -hmm. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. You see that thing? A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. We just went through some, um, some, some synonyms of how to honor your husband. If you must reverence your husband, hold in high regard, put on a pedestal. You understand? Because that's your law, that's your king. You understand? Read that again, verse 26. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 26. Uh -huh. a, wo a woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. Read. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride in her shall what? be counted in her pride. You see that thing? But the Jezebel demon woman that dishonoreth her husband, she's going to watch. She's going to have a big mouth. You see these big mouth women? Listen, they are bitter women. Big mouth women, bitter women. That's how it is. Right? Okay, read that again, verse 26. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 26. Read. A woman that honoreth her husband mm -hmm. shall be judged wise of all. Shall be judged wise of all, meaning what? She's going to be wiser than all the women because she honored her husband. Read on. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. You see that thing? But, but she that dishonoreth him in her pride, meaning this woman, you can't tell her nothing. You can't teach her nothing because she's too prideful, because she's bitter. And what? She hides behind a big mouth. That's what we're reading here. You understand? Read that again, that verse, verse 26. Again. Ecclesiastes 26, Verse 26. Come on. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. Mm -hmm. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. That's an ungodly woman. That's an ungodly woman. She does not have respect for the black man. She does not have respect for the man. The black man. You understand? She disrespects him. The black, the black man does not, cannot tell her, cannot correct this woman. You understand? Cannot check, cannot keep this woman in check. You know why? Because the woman, she's running the show. But that's not the virtuous woman don't think like that. The virtuous woman understands her role. She understands that her one of the roles that she must play is to honor, is to reverence her husband. Because when she does that, the most high God will bestow wisdom on her. But the Jezebel sister, she's not gonna get wisdom. She's gonna get what contempt she's gonna get reproach she's gonna be spoken evil of when her name comes up don't nobody wants to be around you understand because she's a disease okay watch this give me first peter three verse one first peter let's get some examples okay first peter three verse one read that first peter chapter three verse one mm -hmm. likewise ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands. You see that thing? Be, it says, likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Meaning, reverence your husband. Submit yourself to the, to the men that the Lord has set over. Read. That if any obey not the word, mm -hmm. they, they also may without the word be won 
by the conversation of the wives. You see that thing? Your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Meaning your conversation must be able to what? To calm your Lord down. Your converse, by Just by your conversation, you know how to calm him down. You know how to calm his nerves. Just by your conduct, your conversation. Because a lot of the times that the sisters, they don't know how to be quiet, to humble down. You understand? Instead, when, 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 the, when the Lord is, is, is angry, guess what they do? They also, they dial it up. They run their mouth. So guess what? You are not a pain of rest. You're making the situation worse. Your job is to know how to calm him down. And the way you do it is by your conversation. You understand? Read that again. First Peter chapter 3 verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. You see that thing? They might be won by the conversation of the wives. That's what we read in Philippians 1.27. You understand that your, God, your conversation must be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. Read. Actually, While they be hmm. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I'm missing something. Go back to verse 1 again. Go back to verse 1. First Peter chapter 3 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. That if any obey not the word, mm -hmm. they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. They might be won by the conversation of the wives. Next verse. Okay, come on. Verse 2. While they behold your chaste conversation com coupled with fear. It says, while the, while the husband observes. That's what behold your chase, meaning they must see you must let your light shine. Because you understand that the virtuous woman, she will honor her husband. And the way she's gonna honor her husband, guess what? Her conversation will be able to speak volume. Her conversation will be able to speak volume. The way she addresses her law, the way she addresses her king. Just by the way that she addresses her king, you're gonna know that right there, you got a good woman right there. That's a virtual woman. That's a gift of the Lord right there. Okay? Just by the conversation alone, you're going to know you got a gift from the Lord. Watch this. Because you must honor your husband by the way you conduct yourself. E.g., example, your mouth, your conversation with your husband, your conversation with other sisters in the truth, your conversation with your parents in the world, and your parents in the truth. Okay? Watch this. Give me Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23. Let's go back there. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Read that. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as, as unto the Lord. You see that thing? This is a commandment. You must submit yourself. The reason why there's so much chaos, that woman, the black woman is spoiled, the black woman is in her filthiness, is because she does not want to submit herself to the power that the Lord has set over her. You understand? That's why the black woman is born this way. Okay? That's why this is a command. This is why. It's not girlfriend. Not baby mama. No. Why? Submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. You see that thing? Read on. Watch this. No, no. Jump down to verse 22. You know what? Read verse 23. I like that verse. Read verse 23. Ephesians the 5 verse 23. Mm -hmm. For the husband is the head of the wife. The husband is the what? For the husband is the head of the wife. So, so this the apostle Paul is repeating the same thing we read in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. Okay, the order. Read that again, read that again verse 23. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. The husband is the head. There's no 50-50. The husband is the head. The virtuous woman understands the order of God. She's not going to get confused about this verse. Read. Even as Christ is the head of the church. You see that thing? So the church and the wife is the same thing. Read. 
And Christ and the man, the husband, it represents the same thing. You understand? Read. And he is the savior of the body. He is what? And he is the savior of the body. Now that's a heavy verse right there. That's a heavy verse right there. Read that part again. I want to show you something, sisters. Pay attention. Read that again. He's a what? And he is the savior of the body. So watch this. Give me the book of Nehemiah 9, 27. I want to show you something. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 27. Okay. It says the husband is the savior of the body. Watch this. Read that thing. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies who vex them. And in the time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. And according to them, and according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors. Thou did what? Thou gavest them saviors. Thou gavest them saviors. Thou gavest them saviors. Because in time of trouble, guess what the Lord does? He sent saviors to deliver the children out of, out of oppression, out of captivity. Read. The, thou gavest them saviors who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. That's some heavy stuff right there. Go back to Ephesians now, chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20. Ephesians 5 verse 23. Read that again. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. Uh -huh. Even as even as Christ is the head of the church. Come on. And he is the savior of the body. So the husband is the savior of the body. Guess what, sisters? You know, listen, you dishonor your husband, you dishonor your husband. If you're not married, you dishonor the leadership that is set over you. You're not going to make it out when the, when the, when the bomb drops. You're not going to make it out. I'm going to tell you straight up. You are not going to make it out. Read that part again. That last, that last precept. What did he say? He is the what? And he is the savior of the body. He is the savior of the body. You don't humble down to the command that the leadership sets out to protect you for your benefit, for your protection, for your honor, and all of that. You don't do that. Yes, you're not going to make it out. When the door, when the bomb hit, tell you straight, you're not going to make it. And you then after you get married, you don't submit yourself to that man. You don't honor him. You don't reverence him. Guess what? When the when those bombs hit, you're not gonna make it. You're gonna die. The virtuous woman understands the heaviness of this thing. She understands all this. Okay, read on, verse twenty-four. Verse twenty-four. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. As the what? Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. As the church is subject unto Christ. Let's get the definition of the word subjection. Hold on. I like that definition right there. Okay. Yes. Okay, let me share my screen. So we can see... Um, Let's check what Google has to say about it. Okay. Let's start with that one. Actually, you know what? I like that one the best. Read that. The definition of subject. Under the authority of. Under the what? Under the authority of. Under the power or authority, rulership, dominion, command, or... Read that verse again, Ephesians 5, verse 24. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24. Come on. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. Stop right there. Therefore, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. The church is talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel, we are under the authority of the Messiah. You understand? We are under the authority of the Messiah. The church is subject unto Christ. Let's get the synonyms. Read that. Synonyms. Bound by. Bound by. Read that. 
constrained by. Mm, constrained by, meaning what? You cannot move left or right as long as you cannot move. You cannot find loopholes. No, you must keep it straight. You must enter in at the straight gate. For narrow is the way, you understand? Narrow is the way. You must put, enter in at the straight gate. Constrained by. Next one. Answerable to. Answerable to. So the 12 tribes of Israel is answerable to Christ, constrained by Christ, bound by Christ. Because Christ gave us what? We are under the authority of the Most High God. Christ. Okay? Watch this. Accountable to. Mm, that's a beautiful word right there. Accountable. Meaning what? The church is accountable to Christ. Hmm. Come on. Liable to. Liable to. Let's get some more on there. Uh -huh. Read that one. Nothing right there. Under the control of. Under the control of. So the church is under the control of Christ. It's going to make plain as we read that. Read that part now. At the mercy of. Hey, hey, At the mercy of Christ. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Read that one. Under the control or dominion of another ruler, country, or government. Heavy stuff. Heavy, heavy stuff. So we are under the control or do domination of another ruler, country, or government. Jesus the Christ, the church, right? Because we don't, democracy is not in the Bible. The most I didn't give us that garbage. But when Christ returns, we are going to be under the, his authority. Let's do this. Write this, write this words down. In your we are, we are, when Christ returns, we are, going, we are going to be under a theocracy. You understand? Okay. Read that thing. Watch this. The definition of theocracy. Uh -huh. Now, a system of government in which priests rule in the name of God or a God. That's some heavy stuff right there. Read that again. Read that again. Mm. The definition of theocracy. A system of government in which priests rule in the name of God or a God. When the Lord returns, we are going to be under a theocracy. A system of government in which priests rule in the name of God. Who are the priests? We are the priests when the Lord returns. Okay? But get the, look at the next definition. Hmm. Let's bring it on home. Read that thing. The commonwealth of Israel from the time of Moses until the election of Saul as king. You see that thing? The commonwealth of Israel. A theocracy is under is what? Is, is governed by what? The commonwealth of Israel from the time of Moses. Because what did Moses teach us? Moses taught, taught us the law until the election of Saul as king. That goes beyond Saul. It goes beyond David. It goes beyond King Solomon. It's talking about Christ. You understand? Go back to Ephesians now, chapter 5, verse 24. Read that again now. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 24. Come on. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. So, the church is subject unto Christ. We went over the synonyms and the definition under the rule or authority of. You understand? Watch this. The church is subject unto Christ. We understand subject. Okay? Next, next part of the verse now. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm -hmm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. No, in some of the things. In everything. No, some of the, or only in those things that they like. In everything. No, only when it feels good. In everything. In everything. You must be subject to your husband in everything. The virtuous woman understands that thing. She understands that I'm under the dominion or the domination or rule or control or command 
of my Lord, my King, which is what? The man that is set over you, the head. We're not talking about anything where the man is verbally abusing you, belittling you. No, we're not talking about that ashy black demon. We're not talking about that black ashy demon brother. Mm -mm. We're talking about that brother that understands how to conduct himself. You understand? We're not talking about that. We're not talking about that black ashy demon. We're talking about that brother that keeps the commandments. He's got a good report, a good reputation. He's got wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He knows how to deal with others, so on and so forth. We're talking about that type of brother. The brother that is consistent in all his work. We're talking about that type of brother. Okay? It says, so let the wives be to their own husbands in every thing. So all those synonyms that we read, you are under the command, the control, the domination, the rule, the power of your own husband in everything. Guess what? And the virtuous woman, because she honors her husband, she's going to do what? She's going to be subject to that man in everything. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1. Because this is how you become subject to your Lord in everything. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Read that. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Come on. Every wise woman buildeth her house. Stop right there. What did it say? Every wise woman buildeth her house. Every wise woman buildeth her house. You understand? So when you are subject to your husband in everything, guess what? You are why you are a wise woman. That's why it says. A woman that honors her husband shall be judged wise of all. Because this woman, guess what? She built in her house. The man is, is the one, is the architect. Okay? The man is the architect. She's going to come behind the man and implement that which has been put on the blueprint. That's your job, sister. You understand? The man is there to put the group, the, he puts the blueprint together. Your job is to come in and follow the blueprint and build you're going to build that house. Why? Because he has made sure that the foundation is right, the, draw, the architecture drawing is correct, everything is in proper order, in its place. Your job is to follow the blueprint. You don't have to do a lot of thinking in there. No. The thinking is, is, is your thinking is constrained by the blueprint. The minute you go outside of that blueprint, guess what's going to happen to that house? That house is going to be trodden down. That's the same thing of brothers and sisters coming into the truth. You understand? Do you, do you submit? Give me that in Hebrews 13. Because I know there might be spirits that have been jumping on brothers and sisters. Give me Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 7. Read that. Just a tangent. Let me just sidebar for a second. Because there might be a spirit that will jump up. Read that. Hebrews 13 verse 7. Read that thing. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 7. Remember them which have rule over you. Which have the what? Remember them which have rule over you. Which have the rule over you. It says, remember them that have, which have the rule over you. Who's there? The leadership. You understand? Read on. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. Remember them which have the rule over you. Mm -hmm. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. We? Whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation considering the end of our conversation the things that we tell you the things that we advise you the counsel that you receive is just consider the end of our conversation and follow our faith you understand watch this jump down to verse hmm, verse 17 hebrews chapter 13 verse 17 mm -hmm. obey them that have the rule over you. Obey them that have the rule over you. The same thing that we read in verse 7. I need you to pick it up. You read Hebrews 13, verse 17. Read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 17. Come on. Obey them that have the rule over you. Obey them that have the rule over you. Verse 7 says the same thing. Jump up to verse 7. Read that again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Remember them which have the rule over you, mm -hmm. who have spoken unto you the word of God, mm -hmm. whose faith follow, 
considering the end of their conversation. The same thing the Apostle Paul is writing to the Hebrews. Jump back up, jump back down to verse 17 now. 17. Obey them that have the rule over you uh -huh. and submit yourselves. Stop right there. It says, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourself. What does it mean when it says, obey them that have the rule over you? It says, obey them that have power over you. Who is that talking about? The leadership. Okay? You must submit yourself to the leadership. It doesn't mean when it feels good. No. Even when it doesn't feel good, you must follow this law, what is written right here. Because guess what we are, guess why is your commanded to do so? Next part of the verse, come on. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. And do what? And submit yourselves. Uh -huh. For they watch for your souls. For they do what? For they watch for your souls. Because they watch for your soul. Our job is to look after your soul. You understand? Um, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 7. Did that? Hebrews chapter 13 verse 7. Remember them which have the rule over you. Come on. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. Wait. Really? Whose faith follow, mm -hmm. considering the end of their conversation. You see that thing? It says, remember them which have the rule over you, which have power over you. We have spoken unto you the word of God. That's what is the happening thing to God here. Jump down to verse 17. Come on. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. And do what? And submit yourselves. And submit yourself to those that have been set over you. Those that have the power over you. You understand? Why? Come on. For they watch for your souls. Because our job is to watch for your soul. That's why you are given counsel. You are guided. No, don't do this, do this. Do that. Don't say this, say this. Don't act this way, act that way. Listen, we've seen this. Don't do it. Don't go that route. You understand? Come on. It says, because we watch for your soul. Read. For they watch for your souls, as they must give account that they may do it with joy really? and not with grief, mm -hmm. for that is unprofitable for you. You see that thing? But the point is, is that submit yourself, not when it feels good, not when, it, when you feel nice, when you feel all, all, all dangerous. No, no, mm -mm. Even when you don't feel good, it's just submit yourself. It's not about how you feel. It's not about feeling. It's about are you doing what is written? Are you applying what that which is written in this book? Plain blank. You understand? Plain and period. That's it. Okay? Now go back to Ephesians. Ephesians now. No, hold on. Yeah, Ephesians 5, verse 24 then. Ephesians 5, verse 24. I'm bringing this up. Because I'm, I brought that up because we were over here explaining that the church is subject to Christ. The wife also must be subject to their husband in everything. Read that. Ephesians 5, 24. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. In everything. Everything. You know what? Let's get the definition of the word everything. Because you might think that, um, I mean, we understand that word. Why would we get the definition of everything? Mm -hmm. Let's get it. Let's get the definition of everything. Okay, watch this. The definition of everything. Read that. The definition of everything. Mm -hmm. Pronoun. All things. What did it say? All things. All things. That's what it says. You must be subject to your husband in everything. In all things. Not some of the things. Not when it feels good. Mm -mm. A virtuous woman understands that I must be subject to my Lord in everything, in all things. Why? Because he's got a blueprint. That blueprint, I must follow that blueprint. The minute I go outside of that blueprint, I'm clacking the house down. The, the virtuous women understand that concept. Okay? Now let's get the synonyms. Each item. Each item. Come on. Each thing. But the one, the one that I really want is this one right here. Uh-huh. Read that thing. Every single thing. Read that again. Every single thing. 
God that I want you to replace everything with every single thing. Go back to Ephesians 5 verse 24 now. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 24. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as the church of God, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in every single thing. That's some heavy stuff right there. Everything means every single thing. Not some of the things that make you feel good. No. Mm -mm. In everything. Because a lot of the times, man, you know, I've seen this thing where you're going to give an instruction out, right? You give, your, you give the instruction out because sometimes sisters, they are very manipulative. They are very, they, they can play, they can, they can act. So you give an instruction out, they only, they, they're, they're going to make it seem like they follow instruction. You know why? They follow instruction only, meaning what? They come to you when they want stuff. They come to you when they ask for things. But they only do those, they only come to ask you for the things that they know that you're going to agree. The minute, okay, it's only good when you agree. You say, can I do this, my Lord? Can I do that? My Lord, can I do such and such? You say, yes. Let me show you the true text of if that woman is full of beer or not. When they come to ask for stuff, say no. When you say no, that's when you're going to find out what they really need. Okay? Just say no. Just say, mm -mm. no, not that one. That one, we're not doing it. We're not going to deal with that one. Leave it alone. See how if really they are subject to you in every single thing. That's when you're going to know whether where the sister is sitting. Say no. It's all good when you agree, when they come to you and ask you for things and all of that. You know, I want to do such and such and all of that. You agree. Just say no. You're going to see the demon jump up. Okay? If she's a Jezza, if she's, she's a she's a She's covered, you know, she's inside, she's Jezebel, but outside, she looks like the rat. Just say no. You're going to see the demon jump out if she's made out of the spirit of Jezebel, okay? Go back to Ephesians 5, 24 again. Actually, you know what? Give me First Timothy 2. First Timothy 2, verse 11. First Timothy chapter 2. Remember, a virtuous woman honors her husband. That goes into a conversation, submission. The, the virtuous woman understands there's power in submission. She understands that. Okay? First Timothy 2, verse 11. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjects. You see that thing? That is a mind that is well instructed. A mind that is well instructed, she's going to learn in silence with all subjects. Why is he saying silence there? Because she's listening. She's, follow, she's taking instruction. Once she gets the instruction, she's going to execute them based on the blueprint that has been set up. Okay? Now, go back to 1 Peter 3 now. 1 Peter 3, verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Come on. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hay and of wearing gold or of putting on of a prayer. So now the Apostle Peter is saying, listen, your beauty must not be based on the outside only. Okay? Is that it must not, that must not be your pride. That must not be the thing that makes you. No. Yes, we can see what you look like. We see your dress modesty. But when you open your mouth, you're like, wait a minute. This sister, she's dressed so modest and all of that. But when she opens her mouth, guess what? The dragon is speaking. No, it mustn't be like that. You must not put the way you look above the wisdom that you're supposed to build your spirit with. Yes, you must dress more and all of that, but that must not be the thing that makes you. What makes you is supposed to be what? The combination of the outside appearance and the inside. You understand? Okay? Read on. Verse 4. He's going to tell you what must be, what must be your value. Okay? Read. But... Let it be the hidden man of the heart. You see that thing? But let it be the hidden man of the heart. That hidden man is the spirit of Christ. Because guess what? With that spirit of Christ, that's how you were created. Out of who? Out of the black man. Okay? Verse 4 again. First Peter chapter 3 verse 4. Come on. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Mm -hmm. In that which is not corruptible. In that which is not corruptible. Watch this. It says, but let your adorning, 
Your adorning be the hidden men of the heart in that which is not corruptible. Give me the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16. Let's see who is this hidden man of the heart. Okay? The hidden man of the heart. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16. Your adorning must be that hidden man of the heart. Let's see who that is. Ephesians 3 16. Read that. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory mm -hmm. to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. You see that thing? By his spirit in the inner man. The inner man is the hidden man of the heart. Who's that? Next verse. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Mm -hmm. Come on. That ye being rooted and grounded in love. You see that thing? That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love. You see that thing? That's that hidden man of the heart. Christ. And that spirit of Christ is poured out by who? Your husband. You see that thing? Because that's where your power comes from. When the black man is in power, you become empowered. You see that thing? That's how that works. Okay? Go back to 1 Peter 3. Actually, you know what? Give me Sarah 26 verse 13. Sarah 26 verse 13. Let's go back there. The hidden man of the heart. This is what the hidden man of the heart. The, 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 the proof that you have that hidden man of the heart, this is the proof right here. We read it, obviously, you must honor your husband. You must submit to him. You must reverence him. The virtuous woman, she honors that man. Read. Sarah 26 verse 13. Ecclesiastes 26 verse 13. Mm -hmm. The grace of a wife delighteth her husband, and her discretion will fatten his bones. Her discretion will fatten his bones. Because why? This woman is not a fool. This is a wise woman because her, her, the, the mind of her husband safely trusts in her. That's why it says her discretion will fatten his bones. You understand? The husband will trust in this woman because this woman honors her husband. Read verse 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Stop right there. What did you say? A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Stop right there. You know what you want to find, brothers? You need to understand this. It's going to come a time when you get married and you're going to have to enforce the laws of God in your house. When you do that, guess what? When you have a woman that is rebellious, that has got those rebellious tendencies, they hate order and all of that, guess what's going to happen? They're going to see, you're going to see, you're going to pull this picture out that says a silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. You know what they're going to do? Some sisters will say, okay, I must be silent. That's fine. No problem. Then they're going to be walking around quiet the whole day. Because, and you say, what's wrong with you? No, but the Bible says I must be silent. What that mean? That means she's twitching. That spirit of Jezebel, that spirit in her is twitching like a robot. Okay? Because why? Because she doesn't understand. She, does, she understands what the sister says, but the way she's going to act, she's going to act She's going she's gonna to take the scripture out of context and she's going to behave that way just so that she can be able to say, no, but I'm doing it. The scripture says, be silent. So that means you just walk around the whole day quiet. You see that thing? You're going to experience some stuff like that. Understand that thing. Read that again, verse 13, verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Read. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. You see that thing? A silent and loving woman. It's talking about a woman that her mind is well instructed. Meaning what? She what? She, 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 she's prudent, this woman. Advisability. She can receive counsel. She subdues her own understanding. Her own filthiness, she lets go of her own filthiness. She receives instruction. That's why there's, there's nothing so much worth as a mind that is well instructed. That mind is well instructed how? Because, give me that in Romans 2 verse 18. Romans chapter 2 verse 18. There's nothing so much worse as a mind that is well instructed. Okay? Romans 2 verse 18. Read that. The book of Romans 2 verse 18. And knowest his will and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed 
out of the law. You see that thing? Being instructed out of the law. Because this mind is well instructed out of what? Out of my own mind? No, out of the law. This mind is well instructed out of God's laws. You understand? So that's why it is important for you brothers to study. It is important for you brothers to apply. Why? Because the day you get married, you need to be able to teach your wife. Sister, you need to study. You need to apply. You need to be there well versed in the scriptures. Because guess what? Your job is going to be able going to be to do what? To look after the household, the children. How are you going to teach the children if you don't know the scriptures? How are you going to be able to set the right example if you don't know how to conduct yourself? Now is your chance before the big day. Okay? Let's go back. Sarah 26, Ecclesiastes 26, verse 14. Read that again. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord, and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. You see that thing? is that a mind that is well instructed out of the law. That mind is priceless. That's why it says, who can, who shall find a virtuous woman? Her price is, is far above rubies because this mind is well instructed. It's priceless. That virtuous woman, she understands that thing. She understands the power in submission. You understand? Give me, go back to 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3 verse 4. Let's go back here. 1 Peter chapter 3, read verse 4 now. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 4. Mm -hmm. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible. In that which is not. In that which is not corruptible. Okay? Give me that in, um, give me the book of, uh, give me 1 Peter 1.23. Yes, 1 Peter 1.23. Read that. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23. Being born again. Being born again. Being born again. Come on. Being born again, not of corruptible seed. Not of corruptible seed. Come on. But of incorruptible. Mm -hmm. By the word of God. Read. Which liveth and abideth forever. You see that thing? So the hidden man of the heart. You remember now. Christ is the head of the church. The husband is the head of the wife. So the man, the husband, your Lord represents Christ in the church. Guess what? That hidden man of the heart, guess who that is going to be? Your husband. Your husband is that hidden man of, your, of the heart that is in you. Because your, your, you, your conduct, your behavior, your conversation, your dress code, all of that is a testament to your husband. Because he is the hidden man in your heart. Because you follow his command, his authority, his command. You understand? He's that hidden man of the heart because your husband is subject unto Christ. Your Lord is subject to Christ. Guess what? The same way the leadership is subject to Christ. As the law as it is written, so will we do. They follow the lamb whithersoever he goes. You understand? That's why the apostle Paul said, be ye followers of me even as I also am of Christ. Okay? That's the hidden man of the heart. So what's not going to corrupt you is what? You, you need to have that hidden man of your heart because your Lord is your head. He's that head of protection. Nobody's going to corrupt you. Nothing will corrupt you. You understand? Because the wisdom that he's bestowing upon you, wisdom, it says, there's no, cannot, they cannot defile thing come in unto him. Meaning no defiled thing can come into wisdom. Wisdom cannot be defiled. Once you have that wisdom that is coming from your husband, your Lord, or your leadership, guess what? And you follow and you apply, you're not going to be corrupted. Understand that. Okay? Go back to First Peter now. First Peter 3, verse 5. No, read, read First Peter 3, verse 4 again. First Peter 3, verse 4. First Peter chapter 3, verse 4. Mm -hmm. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corrupted, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, mm. which is in the sight of God of great Price. You see that thing right there? It says, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. That's why it says, a silent and loving woman is a what? Is a gift of the Lord. That's it right there. The Apostle Peter is saying the same thing that Sirach is saying. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Because what? Your mind is well instructed. It's priceless. You understand? Read on. Verse 5. Meek means what? 
submissive. There's power in submission. When you submit, guess what? Remember, this man is a savior of the body. When you submit, you're going to get delivered on that day. You're not going to disrespect your Lord or the leadership set over you and think you're going to get the kingdom. You will not get the kingdom. Okay? Read that again. Read verse 5 now. First Peter chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also, mm. who trusted in God. They trusted in the most High God. Now he's taking you back to the history now. He's going to quote what we, what we read last night in the book of Genesis. Watch this, verse 5 again. First Peter chapter 3, verse 5. For this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves being in subjection to their own husbands. Meaning they took pride in be, being in subjection to their own husbands. Because guess what? He's going to get the, the example of who? Of Abraham. Read verse 6 now. It says the holy women, not the Jezebel women, the holy women, it says, who trusted in God. Because what did they trust? They trusted in the order that the Lord set up. That's why it says the holy women also, who trusted in God, they trusted in the order that the Lord has set up and their role in it. That one of those roles is to what? They must honor their husband. Okay? Read on. The six. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. What did she do? Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. You see that part? You see that word right there? Obey. Being in subjection to. Being in subjection to Abraham in every single thing. Verse 6, one more again. First Peter chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. What did he call? What did she call him? Calling him Lord. Calling him Lord. Calling him master. You understand? Calling him king. That's what it means. Lord. Calling him Lord. Read on. Calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are. Uh -huh. As long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. He says, as long as you do well, meaning what? As long as you honor your husband, guess what? You will get the kingdom. As long as you honor your husband, you're going to get the kingdom. He said, that's why it says, even as Sarah, now he's taking you back to Genesis 18, verse 12. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, she reverenced him. She had a deep respect for that man because she understood the order. So guess, guess what? Our foremother Sarah, she was a virtuous woman. She was. Okay? Sarah, she was a virtuous woman. Our foremother. She was a virtuous woman. Watch this. Um, give me give me Proverbs 31 verse 28. Let's get some examples. Proverbs 31 verse 28. Read that. Proverbs 31 verse 28. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Mm -hmm. Her husband, her husband also, he, and he praiseth her. Read that again, verse 28. Come on. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 28. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. You see that thing? It says, her children arise up and call her blessed because she wakes up before everybody else does. Her husband also, and he praises her. You see that thing? The husband is always is, is able to praise this woman because that woman right there, that's the gift of the Lord right there. You understand? Her discretion will fatten your bones. Understand that thing? Watch this. Give me Genesis 24 verse 6. Okay, Genesis 24. Let's get some examples. Genesis chapter 24, verse 50. This is our foremother, Rebecca. Okay. Genesis chapter 24, verse 60. And they blessed Rebecca and said unto her, Thou art our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of, of millions, and let thy seed possess the gates of those which hate thee. Meaning our, our enemy. Let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. That's talk about us. Read on. And Rebecca arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. 
And the servants took Rebecca and went his way. So this is Abraham's servant because the Abraham has sent his servant to look for a wife for Isaac. You understand? So Rebecca also, she had what? She had maiden. She had seven. Read. And Isaac came from the way of the well, Laharoi, for he dwelt in the south country. Come on. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the event tide. The even tide. The even tide meaning what? When the sun is about to, when the sun is going down. Okay, at sunset, read. At the eventide, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. Read. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. She did what? She lighted off the camel. She got off the camel, read on, watch this. For she had said unto the servants, what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? Mm -hmm. And the servant said, the, and the servant had said, it is my master. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. What did she do? Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. You see that thing? A sign of respect and honor and reverence. You see what she did? She honored him. She honored Isaac. You understand? So sisters, shout out to the sisters on that thing. Watch this. Give me Genesis 18, verse 4. Genesis chapter 18 and verse 4. This is our foremother, Sarah. Genesis 18, verse 4. Now, this is when the angels came to visit Abraham. Okay? Genesis 18, verse 4. Genesis 18, verse 4. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. You see that thing? Because angels, they drink water too. It's like a little water, I pray you be fresh and wash your feet. They also have feet, okay? And rest yourself under a tree. They've got body to sit down. Read. Really? And I will fetch you, and I will fetch a morsel of bread. They eat bread too. Angels eat bread. Read. Really? And comfort ye your hearts. After that, ye shall pass on. For, they've, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, so do as thou hast said. You see that thing? So because um, he wanted to look after them. He wanted to look after these angels. Watch this. Verse 6 now. Watch what happens because now he said, listen, I'll take care of you. And then after I've, take, I've taken care of you, you can be on your way. Watch what happens, what Abraham does. Watch this. Verse 6. Verse 6. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah. And to Sarah, and said, hold on, he, he went into the tent now to call the wife, to give the wife instruction. Because Sarah, our foremother, her mind was well instructed. You understand? Read. And said, make ready quickly three measures of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes upon the hearth. You see what he's saying? He said, listen, make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it and make cakes upon the hearth. Now Sarah, Sarah has been given the instruction. You understand? Watch this. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man and he hasted to dress it. Meaning what? Listen, kill a young, um, get, a, um, uh, it says, get a calf tender and good and kill it, okay? So that the angels can eat. Read. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them, and stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they did eat. But watch, watch, watch the point here. Watch the point here. You see the six, when Sarah was given the instruction, you don't see no lip here. You don't see lip, you don't see back talk. Okay, because you need to read between the lines. Some of the things that the, the Lord has left details out. You need to be able to imagine this thing. Sarah didn't back up and say, why don't you make it? You make it, they are not my, they didn't come to see me. They come in to see you because that's what the black woman does. No, those are not my visitors. They're yours. You take care of them. That's what happens in the black community. That's your visitor. You take care of them. Mm -mm. The virtuous women don't move like that. Okay? Jump down to verse 12 now. Genesis chapter 18, verse 12. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? 
my Lord being old also. You see that thing? My Lord being old also because she and she reverenced her husband. That's why the Apostle Peter is referring to the history. He's referencing the history. You understand? Watch this. Give me, hmm, okay, that's it on the, on the, on, 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 on the third characteristic. I think I can still get some, the, third, the fourth one, because I've got five characteristics. So I'll give you this. The fourth characteristic of a virtuous woman, the first one is, is the first one that we dealt with is she understands the order of the most High God. You understand? Secondly, she knows her role. The third characteristic of a virtuous woman, she honors her husband. The fourth characteristic of a virtuous woman, she supports the man of God. You, have, you see that thing? The fourth characteristic of a virtuous woman, the, the, the virtuous woman supports the man of God. She does that. She supports the man of God. Watch this. Give me the book of Judges, chapter 5, verse 1. Judges. Let's get right into it. Judges 5, verse 1. This is our foremother, Depor. Okay? Our foremother, Depor. Judges 5, verse 1. Watch this. In the Christian church, they butcher this chapter. Okay? Judges 5 and 1. Read that. Judges chapter 5, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then said Duporah and Barak, the son of Abinoam, Abinoam, on that day say. So now Deborah and Barak, Barak the son of Abinoam, on that day. Read on, verse 2. Saying, praise ye the Lord mm -hmm. for the avenging of Israel. When the people willingly offered themselves. Read that again, verse 2. Judges chapter 5, verse 2. Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel. Mm -hmm. When the people willingly offered themselves. So now you see what she's doing? She's supporting the men of Israel. She's supporting the men of war. That's what she's, she's doing. You know why she's doing that? She understands that the men are the leader. They need to be supported. Just likewise. That's why I always tell you, sisters, you must support the truth. Pray for the leadership. Pray for the soldiers when they go to war. You understand? That we be victorious out there in the spirit of Christ. Verse 2 again. Judges chapter 5, verse 2. Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. When the people willingly offered themselves. That's what we're doing now. We're willingly offering ourselves for the what? For the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. The virtuous woman, she'll understand her job is to support these men, is to honor these men, is to give honor to the, to, to the leadership that the Lord has set up. You understand? That your, your job is to do this, to honor the leadership that the Lord has set up. Pray for the leadership, that the leader most might bestow wisdom, knowledge, and understand upon the leadership to guide you more, to give wisdom, knowledge, and understand. Okay? Read verse 3. Hear, O ye kings. Mm, you see, hold you on. Hear, oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Let's see again. Judges chapter 5, verse 3. Uh -huh. Yeah, O ye kings. You see what she's saying? You see what she's calling the men of Israel? King. He says, Hear, O ye kings. Because she understands we are the gods of the earth and the scriptures cannot be broken. She understands where the power is. Right there, she and this woman right here, she understands the order of the Most High. She understands her role. She understands that she must honor her husband. She understands that she must support the men of the Most High God, the leaders of Israel. Verse 3 again. Judges chapter 5, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. Give ear, O ye princes. Remember, the name Israel means ye princes of God. Read. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord, God of Israel. I will sing praise to the Lord, God of Israel. Jump down to verse 9. Now. Judges 5 verse 9. Mm -hmm. My heart is toward the governors of Israel. You see that thing? My heart is toward the governors of Israel. Who's the governor? The leader. Who's the main governor over the nation of Israel? Jesus the Christ. She understands that. That's why, that's why she's saying here, my heart is toward the governors of Israel. I'm not usurping myself over the men. No, 
Because in the Christian church, they say Deborah was a leader. Deborah led the men of war. They, they, Deborah led the men to go to war. That's madness. That goes against the scripture. You understand? Read that again, verse 9. Judges, chapter 5, verse 9. Uh -huh. My heart is toward the governors of Israel. Read. That offered themselves willingly among the people. Read. Bless you, the Lord. You see that thing? That offered themselves willingly among the people. Watch this. Give me the book of Numbers. Give me Numbers chapter 1. Okay. Numbers chapter 1. Numbers chapter 1 and verse 2. Read that. The book of Numbers chapter 1 verse 2. Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel after their families by the house of their fathers with the number of their names every male by their posts, every, by their every, poles. Every male by their posts, by their armies. Read. From 20 years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel Thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies. You see that thing? She understood who she was actually was supporting. The virtuous woman she supports the men of the most high God. She understands that they willingly offer themselves for who? For the people. They fight for the sanctuary and for the law. You understand? They are the defense of the nation. We are the last line of defense this day. That's why it says, when, when no hedge is there, the possession is spoiled. That's why she, she said what she said. My heart is towards the governors, the leaders of Islam. You understand? She reverenced them. Go back to Judges 5 verse 9. Judges chapter 5 verse 9. My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. You see that thing? Bless ye the Lord for that thing. Give me Romans 16 verse 1. The men of the, 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 the virtuous women, virtuous women, they support the men of God. Romans chapter 16, verse 1. Let's get some examples on that. Okay. Romans 16, verse 1. Read that. The book of Romans chapter 16, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I commend you, I commend unto you, Phoebe, our sister. Read. Which is a servant of the church, which is at Centura. Centra. Uh huh. Read. That ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. This is the apostle. She, hold on. This is the apostle Paul now writing to the church in Rome. You understand? Because she's giving, he, the apostle Paul is giving report of what the sister did to support him and the disciples as they were what? They were going around to teach the gospel. Watch this. Read on. For she has been a Sakura. So, so a Sakura means a comforter. Come on. For she has been a Sakura of many and, my, and of myself also. Because what was Phoebe doing? Our sister Phoebe. Our sister Phoebe, she, she was. When, they, when, they, when, they, when the men of the Most High God were traveling, they were going to many places. You know what she said? She said, listen. You don't have to go to a hotel. Come to my house. I will host you. And then guess what? After you're done teaching on the streets and all of that, teaching the gospel, then you'll be on your way. Hospitality. Because she understood that, listen, these men, they are putting their lives on the line. They are, will, they are offering themselves willingly for the nation of Israel. She, understand, she understood that thing. That's why she assisted the Apostle Paul. So the Apostle Paul is giving a good report of our sister Phoebe. Jump down to verse 6. Romans chapter 16, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. It says, greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. You understand? Because our former Mary also, guess what she did? She had the spirit of blessing. She was a revolutionary woman. A virtuous woman is a revolutionary woman. Because a revolutionary woman marries a revolutionary man. You cannot be a revolutionary man and you get married to a non-revolutionary woman. She's not going to be good for the cause. She's going to bring you down. She's going to be complaining. Why do you got to go to camp? Why are you always in that Bible? She don't believe. She's Lord. She's got the spirit of Lord's wife. You understand? Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 11. 1 
First Corinthians chapter one, verse eleven. Read that. First Corinthians chapter one, verse eleven. Mm -hmm. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, mm -hmm. that there are contentions among you. You see what our sister Chloe was doing? Because our sister Chloe, she was in the church of Corinth. Guess what? There was a lot of contention. There was a lot of strife. There was a lot of evil. There was the Jezebel spirit was in the church of Corinth. Our foremother, uh, Chloe, she said, you know what? I'm going to tell the apostle Paul. I'm going to tell the apostle Paul. I'm going to tell the leadership. That's what that means. I'm going to tell the leadership. So that's what their sister did. You understand? They support the movement. Because when they see this thing is going out of order, guess what they're going to do? They're going to take the matter on up. They want to push it to the leadership. Listen, this congregation over here, they are doing this, they are doing that. Listen, such and such, there's some evil going on. Guess what? That means the leadership over at that congregation, they are some evil Negroes. So now they don't want to report to the what? To the headquarters. They don't want to do that. That's why, that's why, why do you think the Apostle Paul and, and them, they had to travel? To go from this city, to go to Ephesus, to go to Thessalonica, to go to Greece, to go to Galatia. Why do you think they did that? To go to Rome? Because the churches don't run on autopilot. You have to go there and observe things and pick up things and notice there's some evil stuff going on here. Let me rectify that thing. That's why they had to go and visit the churches themselves. You understand? And when they visited the church of Corinth, Chloe, she had to what? Before they visited there, Chloe had to what? He had to inform the apostle Paul, listen, there's some evil Negroes that are doing such and such. Okay? Give me the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 36. Acts, chapter 9, verse 36. Another thing is this. Sisters, you get married, okay? You get married, and your Lord is doing some evil stuff. He's what? He's, uh, he's smoking. He is watching porn. He's not wearing fringes. Your job is to tell him, listen, you are of the spirit. You need to do such as that. If he gets to hear you, guess what you must do? Take it to the leadership so we can check the brother. What's wrong with you? Why are you wearing fringes? Because that means he's got the spirit of unbelief. You understand? But a righteous sister, she's going to pick that stuff up. But a wicked demon, she's going to say, you know what? I've been waiting for this day. I want this Negro to go back into the world so I can be on top of him once again. Okay? Give me that in uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 36. The book of Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Uh -huh. This, now is there our, was this, this, this is our former, this is our former the Dorcas. Okay, read that. The book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 36. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, mm -hmm. which by interpretation is called Dorcas. We? This woman was full of good works we? and alms deeds which she did. This woman was full of good works our poor mother Tabitha. She was full of good works. You understand? She had a good report. What was she doing? Read on. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Whom when she was, when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. Come on. And for as much as Lida was nigh to Joppa. So Lida is a, hold on, Lida is a location next to Joppa. Come on, read. And the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. So they wanted the apostle Peter to come unto them, what Dorcas was. Read. Then Peter arose and went, and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber. And all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. You see that thing? They, listen, this woman was full of good works. Guess what she was doing? She was responsible for the clothing department of Israel. Her job was to dress the men. You understand? Her job was to dress the men and the women too. You understand? So when, when she got sick, she fell sick and she died. Guess what? They put all the things that she did. You understand? So the Apostle Peter can see the amount of the amount of works that this woman put in to support the men. Read. Verse 40. 
But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. And turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. Mm. And, she, and she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. You see that thing? The apostle Peter, not his, not his yet. The, the, when, when the apostle Peter arrived, right? The apostle Peter, they told her, they showed her the things that this poor mother did. They, they showed the apostle Peter how, how the, the, the glorious work that this woman, the work that the woman is putting in. She put in a lot of good work. It says she was full of good work and on deed, which she did, which she made. You understand? And when the apostle Peter arose, when the apostle Peter came up, up to the upper chamber, the first thing that they showed the apostle Peter was the, the things that talk has made. The work. You understand? Her work spoke for her. She was full of good work. Our foremother. Hold this. Give me the book of Proverbs 31. Like I said, I'm not going to touch Proverbs 31 today like that. But give me Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 31. Proverbs 31, 31. Yeah, Proverbs 31, verse 31. Watch this. Proverbs 31, verse 31. Mm -hmm. Give her of the fruit of her hands. He says, give this woman the fruit of her hands. The labor is the fruit of her labor. Come on. And let her own works praise her in the gates. You see that thing? Let her own works praise her in the gates. Meaning this woman, she also, she put her brick in. This woman also put her brick in. She was not a lazy. She was not slothful. She was not filled with the spirit of gossip and idleness. No. It says, let her own work praise her in the gate. Go back to now. Go back to Acts chapter 9 now. Acts chapter 9 and verse 40. Yeah, Acts chapter 9 verse 40. Watch this. Acts chapter 9 verse 40. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. And turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. So now, the, the, the amount, the, the glorious work that the sister did, man, it was so beautiful and glorious that the apostle Peter, he was moved to say, you know what, I have to bring the sister back to life. That was the mindset, because of the, the works that she put in. You understand? Read. And, and he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. You see that thing? The sister was brought back to life. What? Because of what? Because of her own work that praised her in the gate. Meaning what? She put so much work that she got the attention of the leadership. A virtuous woman, that's how she thinks. She's revolutionary. You understand? Read. And it was known throughout all Joppa and many believed in the Lord. You see that thing? Meaning this thing was noised abroad. Everybody got wind of this thing. Read on. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon a tanner. Okay, now, give me the book. Give me the book of First Ezra chapter 4, verse 17. Remember, our foremother Tabitha, or Dorcas, what did she do? Her job, she was, she made garments. She dressed the men of Israel. You understand? She loved that job. She did it with grace and dignity and honor because she understood when the men go out there, we need to make sure that we are responsible for dressing them up, supporting the men of war. Give me that in First Ezra chapter 4, verse 17. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 17. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 17. These also make garments for men. These bring glory unto men. And without women cannot men be. Verse 17, one more again. First Ezra, chapter 4, verse 17. These also make garments for men. These bring glory unto men. And without women cannot men be. You see that thing? These also make garments for men. Meaning these women, they make garments for men. And when they make garments for the men, they support the men of war, is that these bring glory unto men. You see that thing? So sisters, do not take for granted the work that you'll be instructed to do in, this, in, this, in the body. Take it serious. 
Do you understand? Make sure that your own works, they praise you in the gate. Meaning what? You're going to get the attention of the leadership. You are given something to do, get it done. Make sure that you go above and beyond because you're praising the most High God when you put that effort. Okay? Give me the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 11. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. The book of Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Read. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Come on. And searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. You see that thing? Meaning what? Those that were in Berea, if you read verse 10. They were, more no, they were more noble than those that were in Thessalonica. Because the people in Thessalonica, they did not receive the word of God with all readiness of mind. But those that were in Berea, they received it. And they searched the scriptures daily to see whether those things were so that the apostles were bringing out. Next verse. Verse 12. Therefore, many of them believed. Mm -hmm. Also of honorable women. Come on. Which, which were Greeks. And of men, not a few. Not a few. So it says, therefore, many of them believed. Also of honorable women, which were Greeks. Meaning what? The children of Israel that were what? Were raised under Greek culture. Okay? So the women, honorable women, it says, they received the word of God with all readiness of mind. And they searched the scriptures daily. Meaning these women were studied. To study to do what? To support the men. That's why the, the Bible says, don't take a little many a nice woman. Because she's not revolutionary. She's, she's anti-revolutionary. Don't go anywhere near a Jezebel like that, okay? Give me the book of Luke chapter 8, verse 1. Luke. Luke chapter 8. Saint Luke chapter 8 and verse 1. Watch this. The book of Luke chapter, chapter 8, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. That's talk about Christ now. Christ was going around teaching the gospel. The glad tidings talk about the good news of the kingdom, which is what? Keep the laws, you can receive the kingdom. Read. And certain women. And what? Which had. And certain women. And certain women, come on which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. These women were healed, okay? They received the word with all readiness and they got healed. Come on. Mary called Magdalene, uh -huh. out of whom went seven devils. So out of Mary Magdalene went out seven devils. Read on. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Chusa mm -hmm. the wife of Chusa, Herod Stewart. Herod Stewart, and, because remember, Rome was ruling. Herod Stewart, meaning what? She worked in the government. Joanna worked in the government. Come on. And Susanna and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. You see that thing? They ministered unto Christ. I mean, their job was to learn the scriptures. They learned the scriptures. They learned the scriptures so they may be able to do what? To help the movement. Because if the sisters are also becoming what revolutionary, just like are following after the footsteps of their law, their leadership, guess what happens? The family of the nation of Israel starts to what? We start to come together, both men and the women. We build strong marriages. The strong marriage is a foundation for a strong nation. Understand that? Watch this. Give me the book of Luke chapter 2, verse 36. Luke 2. This is our foremother. Uh, this is our foremother and now from the tribe of Asher. Okay, read that. Luke 2, 36. The book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 36. Mm -hmm. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Panuel, mm -hmm. of the tribe of Asher. Of the tribe of Asher, read on. She was of a great age. Read. And had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. Seven years from her virginity. So now she's... This woman is aged now, okay? She's aged, this woman. Now watch this. Watch what she was doing. Because since her husband died, this is what she did. Watch this. Come on. Let's take seven. And she was a widow of about fourscore 
and four years, which, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. You see what she was doing? Is that this woman right here? Yes, that she was a widow. It says she served God. She departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. You see that thing? Because her job was to do what? Was to help the movement. That's all I was saying last night. Listen, support the truth. Both men and women, sisters, go to the YouTube pages, support, comment, okay? Like, hit the like button, share the videos with the people. That's what our foremothers was doing. That's how, that's how a revolutionary woman thinks. That's the mindset of a revolutionary woman. A revolutionary woman is a virtuous woman. Read. Verse 38. And she, coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the, unto the Lord, and spake of him to all, to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. You see what she was doing? She was bringing the people to Christ. So likewise, sisters, guess what your job is? You must give, you hand a flyer. Give the brother a flyer. Give the sister a flyer. They say, come to the school. Come and learn your history. Come and learn who you are. Come and learn so you can be a sister, a mother, a wife. Okay? That's what you must do. That's what our foremothers were doing. You must follow after their footsteps. Because these women, they were virtuous women. They were revolutionaries. This is a revolution, what we are doing in the spirit of Christ. Okay? Give me the book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 12. Acts 12. Acts chapter 12 and verse 12. The book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 12. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. You see that thing? So this woman, Mary, the mother of John, you see what she was doing? At her house, she had people, she, she, had, she said, listen, come to my house. I've got space. Come to my house. You can hold the congregation at my house. That's what she. That's the mindset that this woman had. You understand? You don't have a place to gather. Come to my house. Because at the beginning, guess what the disciples was doing? They gathered at people's houses to learn the word of God. That's what they was doing. Guess who was making those houses available? We are reading about them here. Phoebe was one of them. Mary was one of them. Mary, the mother of John. She was one of them. You understand? Priscilla, Priscilla and Aquila, husband and wife, that's what they were doing. They were putting their life on the line for, to make sure that the letters that the Apostle Paul is delivering, they get to the right places. They put their lives on the line, they hazarded their lives for the gospel. Sisters, you must be in the same mindset. Don't be here to look pretty. Oh no. Mm -mm. Watch this. Give me Luke 10, 38. Luke 10. I'm almost done. I'll deal with the next characteristic tomorrow, Lord's will. Give me that in Luke. Luke chapter 10, verse 38. The book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 38. Come on. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. So now Martha received Christ into her house. Watch this. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. You see that thing? So you had, you had Martha, you had Mary. They, they were interested in hearing the word because they were little revolutionary. It doesn't mean that because you make clothes, you're not revolutionary. Of course you are. But you are revolutionary in your own right. You're making garments for men. You're supporting the movement. That's revolutionary. The garments that we put on, we go to war and all of that. These are glorious garments. Okay? So they also, they, they, their job, they focus on hearing the word so that they can be able to do what? To do what our foremother and I did from the tribe of Ash. Read. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. You see what she's saying? So Martha was, was she was focusing on in unimportant things. You see what she's saying? Is that but Martha was cumbered about much saving. You understand? Because she was well, she was saving the man. So sisters, guess what? You need to learn how to serve the man. We are going to meet as a congregation. You must make sure that you, you do things in orderly fashion. We're gonna read about that. I'll touch on that thing. 
You need to say how it was when she, Solomon was the king, okay? You need to know, learn how to say, do it in order, do it with dignity. And what? Because you understand the, your road. You understand that thing and you love it, okay? It says, it says, said to him, Lord, does thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Be there therefore that she help me. Watch this. Listen what Christ said. Verse 41. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. He says, listen, you are worried that we are troubling yourself about many things. Listen, this is your house. You deal with it however you will. Set the people in order. You understand? That's what she, that's what Christ told, that's what Christ was really saying to her, you know. But one thing is needful. Mm -hmm. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. You see that thing? So Mary, had, she, she, was, she was interested in hearing the word. Martha was serving. So Christ is saying, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. You see that thing? She loved, the, she, she loved to hear the word. That was her office. Martha, her job was to, to serve tables, to serve the men. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 36, 24. Please ask it. 36, verse 24. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter mm -hmm. 36, verse 24. Read. He that getteth a wife beginneth a position, mm -hmm. a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. You see that thing? Read that again, verse 24. Ecclesiastes, chapter 36, verse 24. He that getteth a wife beginneth a position, mm. a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. You see that thing? You see what 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 Sirach is saying, the same thing that Adam said. Go 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 to Genesis chapter 2. Give me that real quick. Genesis chapter 2, start at verse 20, start at verse 23. Genesis 2, 23. Read that. Genesis 2, verse 23. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones. What did he say? And flesh of and Adam said. This is now bone of my bones. This is now bone of my bones. Come on. And the flesh of my flesh. Mm -hmm. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Now that's a heavy thing right there. It says now this is, this now, this is now bone of my bones. I Meaning she's a part of me. You understand? She comes out of me. Watch this, it says, and flesh of my flesh. That's heavy right there. So what, he, what is he saying? What is he saying? Give me the book of Ephesians real quick. I'm going to show you something. This is what he's really saying. You see, Aram was a prophet. I know some of you are confused. Aram was a prophet? Yes, Aram was a prophet. Give me the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse... Yes, Ephesians chapter 5. And verse 23 again. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Come on. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in every single thing. Now watch this. Next verse. Verse 25. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. Come on. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. No, oh, that's a heavy thing right there. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to touch that now. When I deal with the mind of the Negro, I'm going to deal with this thing. Next verse. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might sanctify the church and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Watch this. Come on. Verse 27. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, mm -hmm. not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Now, when you look at this, when, when you read here, is that the Apostle Paul is showing you that you cannot separate Christ from the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? Now, what Adam said, he is explaining the same thing, though. Watch this. 
Go back to Genesis 2, verse 23 again. Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So the Apostle Paul was explaining that uh, the church is subject to Christ. Likewise, the woman is subject unto the husband. Guess what? Why? Because you see, the two are inseparable. Because he says, this now, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. You cannot separate Christ from the 12 tribes. The same way you cannot separate the black woman from the black man. Because what? The two are one. Literally. Because the woman was taken out of us. Literally. You see that thing? You can't separate the two. That's why in the lens of our captivity, from the time of Genesis, the serpent deceiving Eve, they understand the importance of separating the black woman from the black man. They understand that. They understand that once the black woman is separated from the black man, that power structure is going to crumble down. The power structure is going to crumble down because the two are supposed to work together. Men and women that agree together, according to Sarah 25 and 1. Right now, the men and the women don't agree together. They don't agree together because how must they agree together? They agree together according to what? The Bible. Because the, the, the man, the black man was given the wisdom to teach the woman. So the woman can be empowered to be able to do what? To conduct herself and to know her role according to the order the Lord has set up. You see that thing? To fulfill the characteristics of being that revolutionary virtuous woman. Okay? The fifth characteristic, which I'm not going to touch because I don't have time. Okay? The fifth characteristic of a virtuous woman is the virtuous woman, she teaches her children. The virtuous woman teaches her children. She's not an ostrich. The virtuous woman teaches her children. She's not an ostrich. You understand? So we dealt with what? The first characteristic of a virtuous woman is that she understands the order of God. The second characteristic is she knows her role. Okay? The third characteristic is she, she honors her husband. The fourth characteristic is she supports the man of God. The fifth characteristic, she teaches her children. That is the characteristics of a virtuous woman. You understand? And she's hard to find. Okay? She must be built up. And that is what we're doing with you, sisters. Okay? We're going to deal with the mind of the Negro. One, when we deal with the mind of the Negro, these classes, they are going to what? They're going to become one. So you can understand how to deal with the mind of the Negro. The Negro must get himself right. Okay? Uh, let's break bread. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he, he took the cup when he had sub saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of their cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand to the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord.